Good morning, everyone. It's actually afternoon now. We had some waking up. 11 a.m. Yeah, it's 11 o'clock. Uh, we had some waking up issues. With my jet lag, I got up at 3.30 in the morning, edited a video, and Rachel didn't get up to like 9.30. So we're out and about late. We are in city center of Kyoto. I'm walking through a diagonal crosswalk. We're gonna get a coffee from Starbucks. And I only brought two pairs of underwear, one of which we left at the first hotel we stayed at, so I need to find some underwear. So even the chains like Starbucks or McDonald's have different varieties of foods. Although it's a chain, it still has very small differences that kind of make it unique to the area that it's in. And the Starbucks mugs here are beautiful. 1800 yen. <laughs> they make everything smaller in Japan, even the escalator. That's so funny. We've got our Starbucks, now we're at the mall going to a store called Uniqlo, which is actually a Japanese owned company, but it's all over the world. They do have a chain in California. They have it in Bangkok. And it's cheap, it's pretty decent quality. I would say, what is it like, Gap? It would be yeah. equivalent to like Gap in the United States or maybe a little better than Old Navy, I don't know. So sizes actually change when you go to different countries. So I might be a medium in the States. I might have to go larger and extra large here. Sale, 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 sale. This looks super comfortable. They got rid of the collar seams and the shoulder seams. So I got these Arism size large. They feel like the Ex Ficio Give and Go underwear. So antimicrobial, hopefully. $21 for underwear. I'm about to have a heart attack. More subway. So many trains, so many subways, so many buses. Problems pronouncing the names were at K Kuji Temple <laughs> and northwest of Kyoto. We have almost no say in what we do. In Japan, which is actually fantastic because I just have to wake up, grab a hand, and go along for the ride. I'm doing the good boyfriend thing. So it's cherry blossoms, temple, 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 cherry blossoms. Uh, beautiful parks and things with the bay for 10 days, which is a different style of traveling than I'm used to. But it's nice to not have to plan anything and worry about where I'm sleeping every night. Kinkaku G Mission Temple, 400 yen each. Wow. That's where they get you. So I'm trying to figure out what this is. No cameras? No, it's no tripods. And then somebody tried to get funny, so they did no monopods. And they definitely don't want drones. The problem with these beautiful places is it turns into tourist central. <laughs> Millions of dollars of camera equipment here. Leaving the Kuakon Rik. <laughs> How do you say it? Oh my god. So how do you say it? Kinkaku. I think. I mean, Kinkaku is the thing, right? So that's Rokonji. Kyoto. Rokonji. Kinkanku. Rinkonji. We're now leaving. We're now leaving the Golden Pavilion tourist spot on to the next tourist spot. All right. So we are at Rionji Temple. It's a little bit west of the last temple we were at. It took us about an hour and a half to get here because we took the bus in the wrong direction. So now we're here, we're gonna enjoy. And for lunch we have pork bun. This was three US dollars. Those are fish balls, I think. Fish they balls. Might just be sweet. Fish balls and some sort of sauce. And that was like $3 also. Yeah. This is not a fish ball. After eating it, it is like a noodle flour ball with some sort of sweet sauce on the outside. It's not bad, it's just sweet. So the $5 ticket's actually to get into the rock garden and that's where we're at now. You have to take your shoes off before you go in. So we're here at the rock garden and so many people are here. 
And the dealio with this is you're not supposed to be able to count 15 rocks unless you're enlightened. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen rocks. We are enlightened. So what I really like here is that you pay the five dollars and you don't just get to walk around the property, you get to go into the temple area, which is kind of off limits off of every other temple we've been to, so check this out. You get to see inside the buildings. Everything is so perfectly clean. Every detail is like so intricate. From the weaving on the floor, the design, the sliding of the doors, the joints of the woodwork. The rock garden at the Ryonji temple. That was my favorite attraction or favorite tourist destination so far. The feeling of the wood on my feet I really liked, which is kind of weird. And the smell of the wood was really nice. It was pleasing to my nasal palate. There was a lot of people there. The whole time me and Rachel went to the other temples, I was like, I want to go inside and see what it looks like. So I actually felt like I got to go inside and see the different rooms inside there. So that was cool. If you do come to Kyoto, I do recommend that. That was really cool. So that was the coolest thing we've done so far. It's been raining almost all day, but it's not like a hard rain, it's just like a misty rain, so I'm not worried about having the camera out. We are in Arashiyama, which is west of Kyoto, and we took a bus to another bus to get here. Lots of buses, and the famous attraction here is the Arashiyama Bamboo Forest. So we're gonna grab some food and then we're gonna check that out. This is the bamboo forest. It's like a pathway with a forest made out of bamboo. And a lot of tourists. It's actually approaching evening time, so the light here isn't that great. I'm gonna try to take shots. It is a dense, vertical, parallel, green, crouching tiger hidden dragon forest. We just left the bamboo forest. There's like a whole park area around the forest or containing the forest and we found Cherry Blossom City where there's no tourists at all. Ta-da! Okay, we're done with the bamboo forest. It was about an hour bus ride back to the area that we're staying at. We are getting sushi. Go to Japan, you gotta get sushi, right? <laughs> Put little baskets underneath the chairs, your bags, for, for your stuff, which is kind of cool. This place is tiny. We can get a sushi set with the tuna. There are no foreigners in here, so that's probably a good sign. But it's all in English. <laughs> Thoughts on first Japanese sushi? They put a lot of attention to detail into making it. The way he moved his hands, the way he cut the fish, the presentation I think was more thought out of. It wasn't cheap and it wasn't a lot of food. I didn't get a lot of shots of them preparing it because it was such a small place. I didn't want to be rude shoving cameras in their faces. There was a couple of older ladies and they actually offered for us to try their shrimp ball tempura, which was actually really interesting. Not very many times in my life have strangers in restaurants offered me to try their food, so that was very nice. And the waiter was so nice, he ran outside and was like waving us goodbye the entire time, so I can't believe the hospitality that's going on. It's only about 8.30 back at the hotel. I am exhausted, still recovering from jet lag. Uh, I want to show you one more thing before we go to bed. The trash can in the bathroom is so tiny. Everything in Japan is small. Don't you just want to like throw your little garbage in there? It's so small it barely fits my trash. <laughs> oh my gosh. If you're enjoying this content the slightest bit, please thumb up the video. And if you have any questions about the trip, I will be happy to answer it. Put it in the comment section and I will see you guys tomorrow. Oh my gosh. Snapchat says we're going 156 miles an hour right now.